What's going on, everyone? What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode two of the True Colors podcast. This is your artistic director, Jamil Jude, trying to set up the um, trying to set up the technology here. So forgive me if um, we're running a little bit behind and I am uh, looking off camera, but uh, we're about to figure this thing out. Um, you all know, like this is still very new to me, but. You know, hey, we're learning. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and allowing me to learn uh, with you. Um, so I think I can also check comments and things like that as this happens. Um, so we'll do that. If you have any questions as I go about uh, doing this, uh, let me know. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get it started. Uh, let's get it started. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the artistic life cycles and uh, exploring your aesthetic. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what does it mean to find yourself at different stages in your artistic career. And I have a couple of thoughts around uh, what could be beneficial uh, to artists in the various stages that they find themselves uh, in their career. Uh, so, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop them here um, as we go along. Uh, and then I'll try to get back uh, to them um, as I uh, do this thing. Uh, give me two seconds while I uh, try to figure out how to go live on Facebook. Again, thank you guys very much for uh, rocking with me and helping me learn uh, this crazy, brave new world. But, um, man, this... Uh, True Colors podcast series um, has already been uh, an amazing uh, thing to start to do, uh, especially the way that you all have uh, appreciated and um, shown us some love on that. What's up, DJ Do It? It's good to see you, bro. Big Dog. Uh, thank you for uh, rocking with me right now. Uh, all right, good people. Um, we are live on Facebook too. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep this going. All right. So, hey, artistic life cycles. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, we're, I, for me, I believe there are like three artistic life cycles. I think that artists find themselves in uh, three different stages in their career. Uh, the first one being uh, that of showcasing your skills. And that's really early career artists are showcasing their skills. They're trying to prove their worth. Uh, so we'll talk some time about that. And then that second one uh, where you're kind of emerging, you've been in the game for a little bit, uh, you're now you're exploring your aesthetic. Uh, so when you find yourself in that exploring your aesthetic stage, you're really trying to uh, grow deeper and wider. You're building connections, you're uh, extending your family, uh, you're building your community, you are networking. Um, and I have a couple of uh, thoughts about that as well. And then the last one, and while we're really focusing on early career artists, I do want to spend a little bit of time because I know everyone who tunes in isn't always uh, an early career artist. Some of us have uh, had been more established. So that final stage, we call that show, uh, we call that sustaining your success. Uh, and when you're sustaining your success, there are a couple of things that I think um, artists in those uh, phases of their life can do. Now, again, this is a cycle. So just because you are there at one point in time doesn't mean that you're always going to be there. And you can be 50 years old and have a really amazing career going uh, in front of you, um, but still find yourself in um, that uh, showcasing your skills time. So uh, just know that, like anything, it is cyclical um, so you can find yourself going back in and back out. OK. All right. That was weird. Now we're back. All right. Again, technology. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, learning with me uh, as we figure this out. All right, so let's start. When you are showcasing your skills, when you're an early career artist, the main advice that I can give you is to say yes to learn. What does that mean? That means that you are uh, saying yes to any opportunity and you're not just turning it down uh, because you think that it is below you or that it's not in your chosen path or that it's somehow going to take you away from uh, the goals that you're, you're dreaming of and that you're so much on your grind and your hustle that this feels um, antithetical to that. No, you want to, in this time in your career, you want to say yes. You want to lean in to any and every single opportunity because what you're doing when you're showcasing your skill, you're really just proving your worth. You're proving your worth first and foremost to yourself. You're trying to say, okay, I have a particular set of skills. I have a particular interest 
that I want to uh, look more into. I want to dig deeper. I want to investigate a little bit more. But the only way that we can really do that is to figure out what we are good at and what we're not good at. And how do we know what we're good at if we aren't taking advantage of every single opportunity that's out there for us? So say yes to learn. Just say yes. Uh, one of the early opportunities for me in saying yes uh, was an opportunity to work at an elementary school. And I know I mentioned it last week. Uh, Stacy Scott, uh, my friend Jordan Scott's mom, let me work at a before care program in elementary school. Um, so I said yes to waking up at 6.30 a.m., well, being there at 6.30 a.m., working from 6.30 to 9.30. But what I learned uh, was that actually I have a lot more facility in um, watching kids and creating programs for kids than I ever thought I did. Uh, so years later, uh, that when I had the opportunity to direct uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers, and theater programs, I already had a little bit of a skill set that I had been working on because I said yes to something really, really early in my career. Another say yes to learn opportunity I found was in uh, working in the box office and selling subscription packages. Uh, at those moments, I learned that, okay, if I can talk to people about plays and I can understand what audiences want to hear, that's going to, when I'm going in selling True Colors uh, to funders or when I'm trying to get people to subscribe to True Colors or buy a ticket, I started learning the vocabulary on what patrons, what audience members wanted to hear about plays. Because, you know, as an artist, you can start to wax poetic about um, the character and pathos and um, character arcs. But as a patron, you ain't trying to hear that shit. Oh, um, hey, True Colors. <laughs> um, you're not trying to hear that stuff, right? You, you just want to know, why should I buy this ticket? Why is it important for me to go and see this play? So uh, I think that, you know, saying yes really helped me learn, okay, I can cut a lot of that artist talk out when I'm talking to patrons because what they really want is they want to know why I should spend money seeing your show versus going to go see another one. All right, in, in addition to saying yes to learn, uh, I think that that concept can help you with skill acquisition. Again, in this early part of your, you want to just build your toolbox. You don't want to just have a hammer because it only can take you so far. You want to get that screwdriver. You want to get that saw. You want to get name tools because I'm kind of running out of them. A wrench, maybe. Maybe that's a thing. Pliers, I think that's a thing too. Uh, you want to continue just to add things to your toolbox uh, so that when you are uh, later on in your life, you have that thing that you can rely back on. Uh, the last thing that I'll say is that, you know, we are, I'm a theater maker. Many of you all who are on this chat today, uh, love theater and, um, uh, and that's, uh, that's your jam. Uh, so we talk a little bit about improv and we know that in the world of improv, it is say yes to learn, say yes to learn. But with improv, it is say yes to keep the improv going, right? Uh, when an improv dies, when you say no to your partner. So if we're like in an improv scene and someone says, hey, you want to go to the store with me? And you say no, well, it's done, right? We, they, now the, your partner has to come up and create another scenario. But if you say yes, you keep the ball in the air and it can keep on going. I would say do the same thing with your life, right? Like we all know, we all know we all are here faking it to make it, right? We know that that is the thing. We are just trying to figure our ish out uh, so that we can keep it going. So when you improv, when you make something happen, you say yes, you keep it going, and you make it happen in that early part of your career where you're really showcasing your skills, man, you're going to find yourself creating a toolbox for you um, that you can carry forward uh, in your career. Hey, Derek, I see you um, with the question, and I'll get right back to it. Uh, Derek's question is, how can we get uh, youth involved in theater. Uh, so just know I'm going to come back to your questions in a little bit. Uh, let me go and focus on uh, the exploring your aesthetic. And that's people who are in the middle of their career. Yeah, you know, maybe you've been through a college program or you've been in the early parts of your career. You kind of know uh, what you know. Uh, you know what your skill set is and you're really uh, moving that forward. Uh, so now you find yourself trying to figure out, okay, how do I take that next leap? I'm no longer early career. Now I'm in a quote unquote emerging artist, whatever the hell that means. Uh, but what can I do uh, to further myself in that one? And the main thing I will say is the first thing, first and foremost, define your values. Define your values. Uh, 
<laughs> values or something that if you know me for a couple of years, you know I love them. Uh, my wife is over here in the background laughing at me because I talk about my values all the time. Um, and it's because those are the guiding principles uh, for your thing. When you have defined your values, those are the things that you will drop dead before you um, go back on. Defining your values, especially at that time in your life, it'll allow you to start saying no to grow. When you're showcasing your skills, say yes to learn. When you are exploring your aesthetic, because of your value system, you'll be able to say no to grow. And for me, saying no is really, really difficult, especially when there are so many projects and things like that. But it, when you're exploring your aesthetic, it is crucial that you learn how to do that. So define your values. There are so many workshops that you can find. Um, you know, I have a values workshop uh, worksheet that I'd be happy to share. Th uh, shout out to Paul Robinson at the Shannon Institute in Minnesota. And shout out to Theater Communications Group, TCG, uh, for putting me in contact with Paul, who really helped me uh, build my values. So if you uh, are looking for that value sheet, uh, email me. Uh, my email uh, is jjude at truecolorstheater.org. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on IG. Um, you will uh, figure that out. Yes, uh, MS. Uh, I-J-H, I got my glasses on so I can read. I am saying no to grow, N-O to grow. So we said yes to learn, and now we're saying no to grow when we're in that exploring um, our aesthetic uh, part uh, for uh, our career. So when you're exploring your aesthetic, the thing that you really want to find out is what's your swag? What sets you apart from other people? When you're showcasing your skills, setting yourself apart is not as important. But really, when you're exploring your aesthetic and you're in that emerging phase of your career, you really want to figure out what sets you apart. I'm thankful to Che Yu, a uh, former artistic director at Victory Gardens Theater, uh, who really uh, asked me a question. Said, hey, what makes you any different from any other director? Um, you know, a, a white woman who is directing black plays or um, other black directors or anybody. What makes you stand out and what makes you different? And it really hurt me at first to say, well, because I'm me, I'm, I'm Jamil, like I, I bring something different to the table. But like, do you like, do you really bring something to the table or are you just thinking that you do when you're exploring your aesthetic? This is the opportunity to find out how you are different. So one of those things are grow deeper and wider. Find your thing that you're into. For me, it was directing. For me, it was producing. Go deep into that. Figure out, build off your experiences, your early experiences when you were showcasing your skills. Take that further. If you were asked when you were saying yes to learn to start figuring out budgets, well, now take that a little bit further. What, what can I do now that I have a budget? Can I apply for funding? Can I get a grant? Can I put on a project? Can I run a theater company? Can I produce a play? Can I create a season? Go deep. Go. Figure that out dive deeper into what you're doing. Also, explore more. I knew I liked straight ahead realism theater. I knew I liked the work of August Wilson. I know I liked Katori Hall. I knew I liked Dominique Mariso. But, you know, can you expand that palette a little bit more while you're trying to figure out who you are? Can you step into some Sarah Rule? Can you step into something that's a little bit more avant-garde? Can you step into a Quee Gwynn? Can you step into work that may not always fit what you thought your limited um, uh, focus area was, but can you expand that uh, and explore a little bit more uh, to, to find out what could, how you can differentiate yourself? One thing I didn't think that was going to be my toolbox was musicals. I didn't think I liked them. I was like, okay, that's not my jam. But I explored my aesthetic. I decided to go wider. And then now I, I really love those. Um, that skill set. I started working in opera a little bit more and I knew that I could have some theatricality and it could add to my theatricality if I have uh, have decided to grow as wide as I did. Uh, so that's really an important uh, part. And all that was about my values too. That was about, uh, you know, for, at that time in my life, one of my values was conviction. Um, so I, I wanted to say yes to a project and go wholeheartedly into it and really like have no regrets. Uh, so uh, finding your values is the first thing and exploring your aesthetic, but then go ahead and go, go, go wide and go deep. Take risks, test your limits. Uh, this is the time that you can do it. Um, don't, uh, don't limit yourself. Like why? You'll have the rest of your career to uh, stay in one lane. 
Test those boundaries. See what's really see what's really real for you. Okay, cool. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to say um, on this one in the exploring your aesthetic is to seek models and grow your community. What does that mean? I mean, seek some role models. Ask people to be your mentor. Step out on there and say, hey, will you mentor me? Hey, I like what you're doing. I want to know more about it. Um, teach me what you know. And it doesn't always have to be a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It could be someone on Instagram, or on Facebook, or you're tracking their website or on Twitter and you're watching what they're doing and you're just finding the models who are doing what you're doing. For me, it was like, okay, Derek Sanders is out there and Derek Sanders was directing all across the region. Kwame Kwe Arma, who is now um, out in London, um, said that he's no longer an American theater artistic director, but Kwame was like, okay, that's the type of artistic director that I want to be. Hannah Sharif, who's now artistic director at Repertory Theater of St. Louis. Uh, I was like, hey, sis, hey, be my big sister. L teach me what you're doing. She was an associate artistic director at the time, but I knew that she was going somewhere. So I sought these models out in the world and said, how can I fashion my career like them, both as a freelance director, but also as an artistic producer and director. And I was like, all right, let me track their paths. Okay, they went from one theater to the next and they were associate producer here and then they became an artistic director here and then they were at the TCG things here and they were tracking it here. Okay, I got the game plan. Let me go follow it. Let me figure out my swag. Let me figure out how I'm going to do it myself. But I got these models that I can kind of reference um, as I go through this bit. And as you're doing that, it's important that you grow your community. So you have those aspirational models. You have those people who you're, you're trying to uh, model yourself after their career, the people a couple step up, but you also want to make sure that you're, uh, sorry, uh, IG, I think I got paused real quick. Um, but you also want to make sure that your network, the people that are in the, in the battle with you, uh, that your, why is that important? It's important because those are the collaborators that you're going to have for the rest of your life. The people who are uh, graduating at the same time or in those early career opportunities with you, you really want to make sure that you are staying connected to them um, because as you all move through your career, you're going to be uh, colleagues for the next 25, 30 years. You know, that term about like, don't be an a-hole, like that's part of growing your community and network too, because that stuff's going to come back and bite you. And 20 years later, when you're needing that collaboration or you're needing that freelance job or something like that, it'll be the people that you were in uh, the trenches with in the early parts of your career that are going to be the artistic directors, are going to be the curators, are going to be the decision makers. And you want to make sure that you've maintained a really strong network uh, to do that. Also, your network can help introduce you to new people. Your network can tell you, like, hey, I just uh, finished that fellowship and it was really, really beneficial to me. Let me put you on here. Or I know somebody in my career that can help you um, take your thing to the next level. So make sure that you are uh, not only just finding models and people who can help you uh, in your career uh, move up and following in their footsteps, but that you're also connecting to the people who are in that same space of life as you uh, because they have a lot uh, to offer and a lot to uh, help you grow uh, the work that you're doing. All right. Cool. So the last thing I said, and I promised that I would just hit um, this thing quickly, and that's the showcasing your skills. And that's, what, again, what I'm saying when I find that artists are in the latter parts of their career. How do you sustain your success? And the reason and the way that we sustain our success are specializing. Um, you know, we know what we do. Like I know at this point, I'm a director. I'm a producer. I'm a this is what I am. Like, it's cool. I played a lot. I said yes to learn early when I started saying no to grow. I kind of whittled down uh, my focus area, um, but now I know what I do. I'm a director producer, and this is what uh, this is how my bread is buttered. This is what pays pays my bills. Um, but I'm also taking classes. I'm trying to figure out how to be a better producer and director. Uh, whenever um, SDC stage directors and choreographers, my union, whenever they're putting on webinars, I'm attending those webinars so I can figure out okay, what's what's at the top of the game? This intimacy consulting work. How can I learn more about intimacy consulting to be better at my job? Um, so I'm taking classes because I want to keep my skills sharp. Also, you got to work on the brand. We talk a little bit about that in exploring your aesthetic, your swag, what sets you apart. But, you know, let's let's continue to um, figure out what our brand is, what sets us. How do we uh, stay on top of the trends? 
Um, you know, I think about somebody who's really, really on top of their brand. Um, of course, you know, we can think about celebrities like Diddy or whatever, whatever. But like uh, True Colors alum, a uh, big shout out to Brittany Inge, who's on Boomerang uh, on BET. Brittany understands her brand. She figured it out. She's like, OK, here's what I am. Here's how I'm going to do this thing. And she is specialized. She's an actress. She's a TV actress and she's specialized and she's doing her thing. She's staying on top of her, her brand. Um, and she's really finding a way to sustain her success because it would be real easy for her just to pop up on TV and to be um, the it uh, girl for a moment. Um, but what she's really doing, she's really trying to establish how she can sustain a career uh, in this thing. And I encourage all of us to do that. And the last thing I'm going to ask people, if you find yourself in that third part of the artistic life cycle, is to teach. You know, we all think like, oh, maybe I don't have anything to share with people or what have you. And I say that all the time, um, but I'm constantly reminded. And I'm thankful to everybody who reminds me that even if you don't feel like the fact that you've put together at, for me at this point, a little 10 plus years in this industry means that you have something to share. So if you find yourself in that phase of your life uh, where you're trying to sustain your success, a great way to do that is to teach, because in teaching what you know, you get reminded of some of those things and that might fuel you a little bit more. And then you get to share it with people who can then inspire you back. Right. So you put yourself in that life cycle. Um, I know that as a freelance director, I was finding myself really in that exploring your aesthetic. And then as an artistic director, I'm really in the showcasing your skills. Right. So I thought that at some point that I was getting to sustaining your success. And then, you know, you, you a, a new life experience happens and now you find yourself back to um, a, a, a different phase. And now it's about kind of exploring that. So. Uh, those are my three um, artistic life cycles. Happy to, if you have any questions about them or whatever, um, happy to go back and talk through them. Uh, or you can just kind of rewind the tape. I think that's the thing that can happen here. Um, but the first being showcasing your skills. And, and when we're showcasing your skills, we are saying yes to learn. We are saying yes to every single opportunity that is out there for us. We're going to try to take advantage of it. We are proving our worth. We're adding tools to our toolbox. We are keeping the improv going and we're going to try to make something happen. When we get to that second one, which is exploring our aesthetic, we are uh, finding our values. We are living a value driven life. Uh, we are starting to say no to grow just a little bit uh, because we want to grow wider and we want to grow deeper. We're saying no to we're probably saying no to um, uh, shoe shining, uh, but we're going to say yes to uh, experimental performance art. Uh, right. Like so. So don't don't say no to everything. What we're saying is that you don't have to take every single opportunity that's presented to you like you were when you're showcasing your skills. You can start being a little bit more sp uh, selective and we're using our values to help us define uh, what uh, jobs and the opportunities we should take. One thing I didn't mention, I do want to get this in. Uh, and that was my five P's for job selection. I'm trying to get the number five in the camera or whatever. My five P's for job selection, which helped me say no uh, to grow a lot. So that was uh, the play. Do I like the play? The pay. <laughs> Am I going to get paid uh, for what I'm doing? The place. What city, what, what part of the country am I in? The people. Am I going to enjoy working with the people that I'm saying yes to? And then the prestige of the opportunity. Um, is this something that's going to uh, be a resume builder? Is this something that's going to help me um, move up uh, the ranks that I wanted to? So in order for me to take a job, uh, it had to have three of those. Uh, <laughs> yell to the noobs. Uh, I had to have three of the five uh, criteria. So pay, place, people, prestige. Did I just forget them? Uh, pay, play, place, people, prestige. Woo, thank you, guys. That's what happens when it's live. All right, so uh, something had to be three of those five. Uh, and then the last one, again, we said sustaining your success. Figure out your uh, brand. Really dig into yourself um, and, and, and stay on top of that um, and make sure that you teach. When you're in that third phase of your artistic life cycle, teach. Give back. Give back. Um, add some more um, value uh, to your artistic community. All right, cool. So uh, I think there are a couple of questions that I have out here. Um, 
So I'm gonna try to answer them. I'm on Facebook first because this is easier for me to scroll. Uh, how can the youth, um, how can we get the youth involved in theater? Are there classes? Yeah, there are absolutely classes. Um, I'm gonna talk about True Colors first because this is a True Colors podcast. But uh, True Colors, we have a couple of uh, programs that we love. We, we do the Pace to the Stage program, which is for our elementary school students. Um, and we're in a couple of schools there. So check that out on our website, truecolorstheater.org. Also for middle school students, uh, we do Act Like the Lady, which is a cultural immersion program uh, for middle school students. And for high school students, we do the National August Wilson Monologue Competition uh, here in Atlanta at True Colors. We are the originator of the national competition. Um, so uh, high school students have an opportunity to compete for a chance to go to Broadway and, and say their words um, on Broadway, say August Wilson's words on Broadway. Uh, but that program is also in 14 other cities nationwide. Uh, so our high school program is our really a best offering. Now, there are other theater companies and communities um, here in Atlanta. Uh, for example, I know that the Alliance has a big um, program. I believe Synchronicity has some as well. Um, and then your local um, municipality um, down at the um, city of South Fulton at the Southwest Art Center. There are classes uh, that students can take. Um, I know Don Axum uh, does a lot of work, of course. Um, look into high school programs and things like that. It's not my area of expertise, but I'm happy to source uh, some of that for you. So um, again, follow up with me on email, jjude at truecolorstheater.org. Uh, shoot me that email, find us on Instagram, Facebook, send us a message or whatever, uh, which is specific ask, and I'll try to get uh, more of those questions for you. Hello, Jericho uh, Horn, and then uh, Ben Lucina. Hey, Ben. Uh, uh, ben is a, a blast from the past, so thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, and he says, love, love the say yes motto for life, not just improv. Yeah, absolutely. Say yes to learn is a good thing. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, where <laughs> did the auditions get pushed back for True Colors? Yeah, um, yes. COVID-19 has kind of made everything crazy. Uh, so our season-long EPAs, we're not going to be able to do the way we want to. Um, we are working right now, uh, getting some concessions from some of the unions on figuring out how we can do them. Uh, so stay tuned with us. Uh, we definitely want to increase our family, our True Colors family. So uh, we'll be back in touch real soon about how to stay involved and get uh, your auditions. Hey, Auntie, uh, my Aunt April, uh, shout out. And then Raquel, tell her, uh, Raquel saying, leave your comfort zone. Yeah, so when you're exploring your aesthetic, it is about uh, leaving your comfort zone. And also when you're in showcasing your skills, that early part of your career, yeah, leave your comfort zone. Go do something that you brave. You know, uh, my friend Raquel, who mentioned that, man, she went to Abu Dhabi and said, like, hey, I've been a teacher in the States for a while, uh, but let me go try something. Let me go explore my aesthetic and teach in a different country. What can I learn and take back that will help me sustain a career um, later in my life? So, yeah, I'm all about that. Get out of your comfort zone. Break that. Nothing. Ain't. I think you. I think you do more good for yourself when you are outside of your comfort zone, especially early in your career then you are making safe choices. Yeah? All right. Uh, in the Heights, shout out, shout out, shout out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, Alyssa, thanks for sharing it to your GTA students. It's all good. What up, Derek? Uh, take three. Uh, August was a model competition. You know we're trying to do that. Uh, Got to shout out the brand. Uh, shout out to Nikki Toom. Shout out to Evan Cleaver. Shout out to all of the um, amazing uh, teaching artists who work on that program. We're really, really proud of that program. Uh, Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'm about to uh, figure out these questions on IG Live. So again, uh, deal with me, y'all. This is a little thing. Will any plays from the season be streamed online? Um, so yes to that. Uh, we are really investigating um, how we do about that. Again, we got to work with the unions to make sure. But we're going to try to do like an old school radio play and uh, do some social distance uh, readings. You know, I had someone say that they didn't like the idea of social distancing. They were like more so like physical distancing. So we're going to try to get that into the lexicon, physical distancing. Uh, but we're, we're going to try to find a way to stream some uh, plays for you guys uh, in this crazy uh, time that we are now. Uh, what would you advise for a person who has graduated undergrad 10 years ago and is interested in an arts ad administration career? Um, man, we always need arts administrators. It's a field that um, aren't, there aren't enough of us um, and that we always need more. So I would uh, encourage you to think about uh, local non-for-profits that you would like to work for. Um, 
and just hit them up. Ask them if they have any openings. Um, and then, you know, if you're in that early career part of your arts administration career, this is when you're saying yes to learn. I would encourage you to volunteer because uh, we're always any nonprofit, any arts nonprofit is always looking for volunteers. And yes, I know that is tough sometimes, especially in the uncertainty of this economic moment and things like that. But that doesn't mean you have to work full time as a volunteer. Volunteer with three hours, four hours, five hours, and see if you really like it. Because arts administrators, while it is fun and we have a lot of freedom uh, to move, ain't nobody getting rich being an arts administrator, all right? Um, and the hours are long. And sometimes the bosses are crappy, you know? Like, um, so volunteer might be a really easy way to say yes to the opportunity, learn, figure out if that's really what you want to do. And then once you kind of hang around some organizations for a while, those job opportunities open up and then you're right in line for them. OK, cool. Um, five P's. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, we got see for reminding me that the f fifth P was play. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you guys for your help. Let's go. True colors. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in my view, how important is having passion for your interested area? I believe that is something in which allows you to go deeper. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing that keeps you going, gets you out of bed at the end of the day. When you're working the long hours, when you're not getting paid, when you're in your apartment like I was eight years ago, seven years ago, crying because you feel like you got more talent than what the world sees uh, right now. Um that passion for what you do is what is what drives you is what's going to keep you um, going. Um, so, yeah, man, find the thing that inspires you, that lights that fire under you, that makes you want to um, stay involved uh, and, and, and keep it going. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I'm I'm all about that. Uh, yep. No, to grow was the thing. Everyone, I apologize for cursing earlier. <laughs> uh, hopefully my mama ain't listening. Um, uh, tips for finding opportunities to say yes to in Atlanta. Um, okay. Um, I know a lot of the Atlanta theaters are trying right now to try to find ways to put what they're doing online. Um, I would reach out to these artistic directors cause a lot of them are sitting at home uh, on their email 24 seven cause they can't really meet. Um, so this is a good time to slide up in the DMS and the inboxes of artistic directors um, to say, hey, what you got going on? Um, especially if you are familiar with the digital space. Hey, here's this thing that I can provide you, I can offer you. I would love to learn more about it. Um, I would hit up, um, you know, we talked about finding models. Uh, who Whose career um, can be a great model for you? Um, t reach out to them. Again, people are at home right now. And a thing I'm learning about artists is that we have a tough time saying no to people. Um, and so reaching out and just like, hey, let me try to figure this out. You all know at True Colors, we are uh, we are often open. We love to get assistant directors and volunteers and um, uh, observers inside of our process and things like that. So this these are the moments um, to um, take advantage of. And reach out to people and ask them, hey, what's a thing that I can do? How can I help you in this moment? All right. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Thank you for that. I will definitely be volunteering with True Colors. Good. All right. Brittany Mangum, if I don't hear from you, I'll be like, see, you was out here lying on the IG. All right. Uh, good stuff, y'all. Um, so cool. Keep the keep the questions coming. Um, hey, Chris is nice. Uh, to hear, to see you. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we have a lot of black kids who are talented in the arts, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of opportunities for them to learn and build that craft at a young age. How can we better provide these opportunities for them? I mean, I think by stating it out loud is the beginning. Um, I also think that, you know, we got to be a little creative sometimes too. Uh, there are a lot of grant programs and things that are about supporting youth development. Um, 
and especially in certain areas, this person I know from Tallahassee, I know in Tallahassee, man, we are huge on sports. We're huge on sports. We're huge on sports. Um, and as a former football player and as a person who grew up in Tallahassee as a sport player, like, I, I get that. Um, but like, let's just be creative, man. Like, you know, we can get kids to create their own, um, create their own worlds. Um, you know, I, I remember, like, writing plays in church and things like that and writing music. Um, get those kids outside of that. Um, that experience, and then also like utilize the Tallahassee or southern or your local. I'm just getting speaking to someone from Tallahassee, but utilize your local arts community and ask the artists in the community to help think of programs because artists are all they create. That's what they do. Um, so really, let's just let's link in uh, to our community and then help them whatever resources that you can bring to the table to help them augment their programs. Really think about that. So let's be creative. Let's be collaborative. Uh, especially when we uh, can um, be in space together and not just virtual space, but physical proximity space. Uh, let's let's be creative when we get there. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, for those of you all who are trying to get into arts administration, one person mentioned um, think about um, a nonprofit board service. Um, which would be really great too, because a lot of, uh, especially smaller nonprofits, uh, need board members, and there's not always um, a cash give or get. Sometimes we just they just need your experience or your uh, access to resources or to a community or a connection and things like that. Um, so if you really are interested in arts administration, um, think about board service. I know I did that a lot in my early career, especially in Minnesota. I um, quickly joined a couple of nonprofit boards, and that made me a better producer and artistic leader. Um, but it also kind of gave me a more sense of um, how I can advocate uh, for communities and regions. OK. All right. Uh, a local tribute to Marion McClinton, man. That's a that's a good thing, you know. Um, uh, Marion uh, McClinton, um, one of only three directors, um, now four, I believe. Um, but while uh, August Wilson was alive, to collaborate with August um, on Broadway, uh, Marion was a stalwart of the Minnesota theater community, and I'm um, honored that he thought enough of me to pour into me. Um, as a mentor, um, it hurt me that I wasn't able to be there for his tribute in Minnesota, um, but I've been thinking about a lot on ways to honor him in my um, daily life. I've been saying his name a lot. Uh, I tell people that um, I know my actors sometimes get mad uh, because I talk a lot in rehearsal, but I learned from the best. I learned from Marion that in sharing your personal experience can often unlock something uh, that may not have been um, at the ready for any collaborator. And uh, another thing Marion did, man, he treated every collaborator like they had something important to say to the room. There wasn't any hierarchy um, in how he did. Yeah, he was the director and he ultimately had to make the final decision, but even if you were um, script keeper number three uh, and buried in the corner if you saw something in the play, he wanted to hear from you. And I think about that a lot and I try to honor Marion um, in that impulse as well. So uh, thank you uh, for bringing his name into the space. Hey Katie, uh, uh, sorry if you already answered, but how will that Rona, that Rona, okay, that's what we're calling it, affect TC season now and in the future. Yeah, man, uh, we're still figuring out what to do here at True Colors with the season. You know, um, our last show, School Girls with African Mean Girls Play. Um, thanks to everyone who came and checked that out. Um, but we closed that show um, on March 8th, uh, really before uh, the nation started doing a lot more of limiting of the gatherings and things like that. And our next show isn't scheduled um, to uh, have performances until June. So we're very much in a wait and see uh, Mo, but we are trying to do more digital content, uh, bringing you guys this series, um, True Colors podcast series, every Thursday from 1 to 2. Um, so continue to check that out. We're going to try to do some more readings and things like that. So um, we're going to try to continue to be creative and connect um, uh, while we experience that Rona. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so uh, we're learning. Uh, season announcements will be coming soon. We wanted to do it earlier, but um, right now, it doesn't feel like the time to be asking people to think about what they're going to do in January 2021. I mean, we all want to be hopeful, um, but we also want to be cognizant of the moment and kind of read the room. I mean, reason why 
Like no one's doing April Fool's jokes and things like that because you know shit ain't funny uh, right now, right? Like, um, but we are going to try to continue to um, bring content and stuff like that. Uh, what else do we got here? Any other questions coming through? Um, cool, y'all. Um, I, I, I very much have appreciated uh, this opportunity. I'm happy to hang out a little bit longer. Uh, like I said, you know, we'll go until uh, two um, or until my baby starts crying and I got to go leave. Uh, what up, bro? I see you, Darius. Um, so thank you guys for checking in. I uh, love to continue to get content ideas from you all. What types of things that you want to hear uh, from us on the True Colors podcast? Um, so uh, hit us up, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I th- right now we're streaming uh, live on uh, True Colors IG. And then, of course, um, streaming live on um, uh, my personal Facebook or whatever. I'll get a couple more cameras. I was Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one of the phones set up in time uh, to capture it another way. But, um, y'all, just thank you uh, so much for tuning in, listening. I hope uh, our conversation about advice for um, artists and their artistic life cycle was a value. Again, those three phases for those of you all who are just tuning in are showcasing your skills. Uh, at that point, we really want to just say yes to um, taking advantage, uh, growing our skill set. Uh, when we're in that phase, uh, we're exploring our aesthetic. Uh, and then that, that's when we want to be a little bit more selective. We want to say um, no to grow um, so that we can grow wider and deeper. Uh, we want to build our networks. We want to set models. Uh, we want to find people um, that can help us um, uh, take our careers to the next level. And that's both people who are above us, but also people who are right there in the trenches uh, with us. And then the last one is sustaining your success. Once we feel like we have, we know who we are. We know what our swag is. We know what sets us apart. Um, continue to build up the brand. What's your brand? What's your identity? Are you, are you, and how are you communicating that brand? Is your website up to date? Uh, are you staying on top of social media? Because it is a social media world, especially for those of us who are entertainment. Um, and then, and we really want to make sure that um, regardless of what you think, if you find yourself and you're sustaining your success in your career, you have something that you can teach people. So grow back, reach back, uh, and be a teacher. All right. Um, cool, 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 cool. Just checking to see if there are any other questions. There's a button here that I'm being asked to tap. What does that say? What's your advice for early career designers wanting to work with true colors? I'm a costume designer. I'm a costume designer and loved African mean girls. Okay, I'm not sure that I can see the end of that, but um, uh, dope question to answer. What is happening? All right, y'all. I'm I'm <laughs> clearly I'm not uh, as te- not technologically advanced as I want. Uh, but early career designers, hey, send us your portfolio. Let us know what you're doing. If you're designing shows, tell us so that we can come and see them. Um, you know, utilize your network. Um, get in front of us. That's the best way. Like um, you know, as as sad as it is, um, how do I get this thing off the screen? All right, someone help me. Um, but, uh, yeah, early career d- designers, send us your portfolio. Let us know when you're designing and working around, um, stay on top of it. If we don't get that email answer back the first time, don't be like, well, oops, I tried. Nah, like email multiple times. Like, um, you know, my inbox has, uh, so many unread messages, but Hey, it's good. If you continue just to email me and message me, uh, bring it back up to the top. All right. Sorry. The video keeps pausing. It says that my internet is not as strong. I'm trying to find the best place in my house. Uh, shout out to uh, the photo that we got, uh, the painting that we got in Cuba. Uh, we call him Tio Alberto. Um, so I think this is the best part of my house. But unfortunately, my internet is a little crappy here. But I'll try to figure it out uh, for next week. Um, do, 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 do. Someone's asking for us to do profiles on each playwright from the season. That would be great. Some in-depth profiles. And we're going to try to get some artists on. Um, next week, I'll be joined um, by an artist. Um, or two. Uh, uh, so we'll be able to uh, try that out. So I think there's a feature that you can kind of go live with multiple people or something like that. We'll figure it out. I got a week to figure it out. Uh, so you'll, uh, you'll see that. Um, and um, yeah, y'all, uh, here we are, uh, 14 minutes. I'm going to end it unless I get some uh, questions uh, in the next couple of seconds or whatever. But 
Um, yeah, man, just uh, thank you again for uh, tuning in. I uh, appreciate it. I uh, look forward to checking you guys out uh, next Thursday um, when we do this again. Um, if you're liking the podcast series, um, check it out on our website, share it. Um, you know, I believe the archive of this uh, we'll be able to share. Uh, I think that's a thing that happens as well. Um, Florida Leash, I think I just answered your question. And your question was about um, how can early career designers get involved with True Colors? And I was saying, send in your portfolio, your website. Um, if you're designing things in the area, uh, let us know so we can go see it. And if you if you don't get a response immediately, email again. Uh, all of our email addresses are on our website, truecolorstheater.org. My personal one is jjude at truecolorstheater.org. Um, Lisa Watson is our production manager. She's part of my artistic team. Uh, she really helps me um, identify and select designers as well. Um, so um, hit us up. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know how we can see your work. Um, and then we'll try to set up some meetings uh, moving forward. Uh, so I hope that got it. Uh, okay. Our, our other TCTC staff, staff members going to jump on the podcast to share their knowledge as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, we got uh, some great uh, brain trust. Um, so we wanted to try and experiment this out. Um, first, um, with a couple of things that I had been asked directly, um, but you'll start to see uh, some more True Color staff members uh, taking the mic. Uh, and speaking to what they know. Because like I said, we have a talented and amazing staff. Like I know Nikki Toombs has um, years of uh, experience um, as an artist uh, and as an educator. Letitia Ellerson, our development director, is amazing. Kristen Parker, uh, Chandra Stevens-Albright, our managing director. So we have a lot of talent on our staff, and I look forward to them um, in their uh, upcoming uh, True Colors podcast episodes. Uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Thank you all. We got about like 12 minutes. Um, yeah, man, I hope y'all are staying safe. I hope y'all are um, figuring it out, doing things that bring you joy. I know joy is an important thing that to my life right now. Um, so that's been that's been really great. I've enjoyed the time uh, kicking it with my family, um, uh, seeing my little daughter uh, kind of run around the house and spend a lot more time with her than I'm normally able to. That's been nice, too. So. Um, good stuff, y'all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. Um, and I will check back within with you guys uh, next week, Thursday at one o'clock when we do this again. Cool. Positive vibrations.